Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we'll have a look at adding one image to another in Adobe Photoshop. I've gone ahead and downloaded this image from unsplash.com. It's a top-down view of some lavender on a slab of marble. To look any way realistic, anything that I add to this image should be photographed from the top down. Now I went to pingtree.com and downloaded a couple of images from there. I'm going to open them and then explain to you why I use those. So here is one of them. It's a top-down view of a cup of coffee. And the second one, which I'm also opening here in Photoshop, is some coffee beans. Again, a top-down view. Now in the background here, you'll see that there is this sort of little checkerboard pattern. Now that isn't actually an anything, it's just an indication that there is nothing here. So this image here has content on it with the plate and the spoon and the coffee cup, but around the edges is nothing. That means when I add it to an image like this one, we're going to see the marble around the edges. So anytime that you want to add an image to another one, it will certainly help if it's got transparency around the edges. And typically, ping images, that's PNG images, will have transparency. That it's a format that actually supports transparency. And that's why I'm using these images from PingTree. If your image doesn't have transparency, I'm going to have a look in a minute as to how you can deal with that. But you can download free of charge two free images from PingTree every day. So it is a good source of images that have their backgrounds already removed. I'm going to add this coffee cup to my image. So I've got my layers palette showing here. To do that, you would choose Window and then Layers. And in fact, all of the palettes that you would use in Photoshop are accessible from this Windows menu. So once you've got the Layers palette open with this particular image, and in actual fact, any ping image, you're just going to have one layer in it. So you're going to the Move tool up here, the one that has double arrows on it, and you're going to click on this layer to select it. Then you'll press and hold the left mouse button while dragging on this layer and you're just going to take it with you and you'll go all the way up here and drop it on top of the tab for the document you want to add it to. If you make a wrong choice, you can just keep going until you find the right image to add it to and then come down here and just let go of your left mouse button and the image will jump in place. Now I'm immediately seeing that my coffee cup image is a bit small relative to this lavender. I know that a coffee cup and spoon are going to be a bit bigger. So I'm just going to drag on this corner handle, but I'm going to be careful when I do so that I don't skew this out of arrangement or out of alignment. You can see that I could get a very weird coffee cup. Let me just click up here to undo that and let's hold the shift key instead as I drag on a corner handle. And when I hold the shift key, it's going to be sized in proportion. So the width and the height are both going to be sized at the same time. Now I want to rotate this around a little bit. So mindful of where I want to end up, I think something like this will work for me pretty well. And I'll click the check mark. Because I have this Move tool selected, um, it's a bit hard for me to stop looking at this blue surround to this image. I can stop looking at it if I just click here away from everything in the Layers palette, and that sort of turns that off. If I want to get those handles back, I would just click on the layer and the handles will come back. If you don't see your handles for any reason, have a look up here at this top bar and you'll see that there's an option Show Transform Controls. Well, these handles are transform controls. If I deselect that option, you can see that even though I can move the coffee cup around, I can't see those transform controls. So you probably will want to be operating with transform controls visible. It just makes life so much easier. Let's go and do the same thing with our coffee beans. So I'm just going to drag on this layer and take it all the way up to the image we downloaded from unsplash.com and just let go of it. Well, a couple of problems. Our coffee beans are on top of our coffee cup. So over here in the layer stack, I'm just going to grab hold of the coffee beans layer and just drag it underneath the coffee cup so it's better positioned. I'm also a little bit concerned here because you can see that the coffee beans have been cut off. 
and they've been cut off on this side as well. So if I just put them here in this image, it's going to look a little bit strange. So I do want to place them over the edge, but it would probably help me too if I rotated them slightly. So I'm just placing my mouse pointer outside the handle here, and it doesn't matter which handle I put it outside of. And when I see those bent arrows, then I can start dragging around to just rotate this image. And I'm looking at the rotation I've got. I'm pretty happy with that. I just want to pull this image back because I don't want this gap here. And I don't want these gaps here. So let's just go and grab the image and just place it sort of over the corner here. I think that's a good position. I'll click the check mark here just to commit to what we've done. I'll click away from everything. To be able to move my image around, I'm got the move tool selected but I'm pressing on the space bar with one finger so right now the space bar is held down and when I do that the tool changes into this hand tool over here but I don't actually have to select the hand tool all I have to do is to tap and hold the space bar and I can move the image around that's just a handy way of operating now right now as I'm looking at this image I'm thinking that these lavender leaves are a little bit more attached to the image than my beans and my cup. I get the feeling that my cup and my beans are floating a little bit. And the reason why the lavender is more stuck to the image, it looks better in place, is it's throwing a very, very subtle shadow. If we could add a shadow to our beans and our coffee cup, it would look a little bit better. Now, it's not going to look perfect because the shadows on the beans and the coffee cup aren't exactly going to match the light in this image, but a shadow will help it quite a bit and enough to get away with this in a simple image like this. So let's go and grab this coffee cup layer. Just click over here and I'm going to the FX icon. Just click on that at the bottom of the layers palette and go all the way down to drop shadow and click on that. This allows us to add a drop shadow to the image. Now I am looking at this image here, or this area here, and I'm thinking that the drop shadow is probably being thrown upwards a little bit. So I'm thinking that instead of over here, it should be up over here. So let's just rotate the angle all the way around. And that throws the shadow in sort of this direction. I think that'll be a better direction. At the moment, it's set to multiply and a black shadow. That's pretty good. I'm going to leave that as that right now because we've got other problems that are more obvious. You can see that the edge of the shadow is very obvious. Well, we can fluff it out a bit by dragging on size. I think size is a really poor name for this particular slider. I don't think it really is size. I think it's more like fluffiness but just think of it as being the one that's going to soften that edge for you. So I'm just adjusting that until it looks like it's a bit fluffier than it was. I might bring the distance in a little bit so it's a little bit less obvious around the edge and I could bring down the opacity a little bit as well. If we have a look now with the preview turned off, you'll see that the coffee cup looks like it's floating but with a slight shadow turned on, it looks a bit more stuck to the image. It just looks better in place. I'll click OK. Now, once we've got the shadow that we're pretty happy with on the coffee cup, we can add it to the beans here, but we don't have to do all that work over again. What I could do is just click on the layer with the coffee cup and click here with the right mouse button and then choose this option down here, which is copy layer style. What we added with the drop shadow is what's called a layer style, so we're going to copy it. Now I'll go to the beans layer, right click, and paste the layer style. And when I do, the beans get this little shadow around them. And let's just turn the shadow off and on again. You can see that even just that little bit of a shadow is going to make the beans look a little bit more like they belong in the image, like they're attached to it. I still think that my beans are probably a little big relative to the cup. So I could go to the beans layer here and I could just shrink them down a little bit. Again, I want to hold the shift key as I shrink them down because I do want them to shrink in proportion. I don't want to stretch or compress my coffee beans too much. And I'm just going to click the check mark because I'm finished. 
you'll notice that the shadow just adapts to wherever the beans are placed and it adapts to the size of the beans. So it's going to get smaller around these beans. Now, I said that I would show you what we would do if we didn't have a ping image. So let's go and get another image that I have downloaded from unsplash.com. In this case, I have a bowl on a background and I want to add it in place of the coffee cup over here. We need a way of removing the background from this image. And one of the tools that we have available in Photoshop here is the quick selection tool. Now, there are various ways that you can get rid of backgrounds in an image, but the quick selection tool is one of those options. Up here on the toolbar, you'll see that I've got the middle of these three icons selected. So I'm going to be able to add to my selection. I have a very small brush selected here, but I'm just going to start dragging over the background here. And as I do, you'll see that I'm getting these little marching ants around the area that I've selected. I'm being careful not to go too close to the bowl. And Photoshop has done a really, really good job of selecting just the background. Now, right now in the layers palette, I'm seeing for this image that its background is called background, but it's got a lock on it. So that's going to be a little bit problematical to me. What I need to do is to click on that lock to unlock it. And now the background layer is no longer called background. It's just called layer zero. My selection's still in place. Everything's fine here. And I can press the delete button. And when I press the delete button, you can see that we've got pretty much the same thing here as we had when we had all those ping images. We've got an image of a bowl and the background is transparent. But you will see that there are still some marching ants around here. And for that, I'm going to need to go up to select and just choose deselect. In other words, don't select anything. Just show me the image pretty much as it would have been if we downloaded it as a ping image from ping tree. Here we have ping tree. Here's another ping tree image. And here's our image that we've now made to look like a ping tree image. Its background has been removed. So to get it into our image that we're mocking up over here, we're going to do the same thing. Click on the layer and drag and drop it into our document. Now it's coming in very large. So we're going to do the same thing. Hold down the shift key and just size it proportionally. I'm going to use it in place of the coffee cup, but I am concerned that I need to look at the scale of things. This is a sheaf of lavender, and these are some slices of lemon and some very small pine cones. So I'm just looking to make sure that my image is scaled so that these items are pretty much the size that they would be relative to this lavender because the lavender is actually stuck to this background. We can't change its scale, so we need to make other things match it. So I'm just going to click the check mark here. Now, I don't want my coffee cup any longer, so I'm just going to hide it over here in the layers palette. This is my coffee cup. I'll just hide it away. And I probably don't want my beans either. So let's just go and place and scale the image that we've brought in here. I think just over the edge is going to look better. But I would like my drop shadow because we know that a drop shadow is going to put this image in place a little better. It's going to situate it a bit better. So I'm going to right click on a layer that does have that drop shadow, copy layer style, go back to the image layer that we've just added that doesn't have a layer style, right click and choose paste layer style. And now it's got its sort of shadow around it. There is one other thing that's concerning me a little bit with this particular image is it's very orange and brown. And the rest of this image is a sort of blue gray. So the colors aren't quite matching and we can do a better job of our color here. So I'm going to click on this layer that is a bit too orange and I'm going to choose image and then adjustments and then what's called match color. Now, match color is a way that we can borrow the colors from the background here and use them to add a little bit of a less orange tone, if you like, to this element here. 
So we're concerned here with the source. So we need to find the source that we're going to borrow from. And the source that we're going to borrow from, I'm looking up here, is the tabletop image. So here it is here. This is the one I'm going to borrow from. That's the current image we're working on. And then we need to select the layer that we're going to borrow the color from. And we want to grab the color from the background layer. You can see here, this is the background layer. We're seeing a little thumbnail of the layer that we're borrowing the color from. Now, it hasn't been enormously successful because you can see that's just blown out our image entirely, but there's a fade option here. So what I'm going to do is fade this effect back. I don't want to fade it all the way because that was the problem I started off with. But if I bring it down to maybe about 60%, then I'm going to get a less orange looking image and something that is going to match a little bit better the look and feel of the background that I have here. You can also adjust color intensity and luminance and you might get better results with some of these sliders, but I'll leave you to work with those yourselves. It's just a case of finding something that speaks to you that is able to tone down an image that perhaps has some colors in it that's not quite matching the rest of the image. When you're done, you'll click OK. Now, if we were saving this image and we decide that we're definitely never going to use this coffee cup in here or these beans, it would be a good idea to delete them because these items are going to add to the size of the file. So you could just come in here and grab hold of the coffee beans and just drag it onto the trash can and that will get rid of it. And I'd do the same with the coffee cup image if I was 100% sure that I would never want to use them in this image. Now I would go ahead and save at this image because it's going to save at a reasonable size. It's not going to be too large, filled up with things that we're absolutely never going to use. If you like carefully researched content like this, clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results, then you'll love my Skillshare content. I'm a Skillshare top teacher. I have hundreds of short courses on Skillshare that you can access along with thousands of other great courses all for the price of a single subscription. If you're interested, there's a Skillshare coupon for you in the description below to use to sign up. Using this coupon benefits me as a creator and it helps me continue to make free content available here for you also on YouTube. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. On the screen now, you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you. If you enjoyed the video you've just watched, I know that you're going to really enjoy the one I've picked for you to watch next.